Hello everybody and welcome all thanks to LD Mobile. This is NBL Overtime, hashtag see incredible and it was exactly that over week 16 of the NBL. Plenty to get into, get involved in anytime you like at NBL. What up? Plenty to talk about. You look good. Thank you. RiseNation.com.au, is that what it is? Training to look good naked. There it is, and right in front of you. I don't care about anything else. <laughs> I just want to make sure I can take my clothes off and look good. Be hey, happy with what I see. And Liam and I are going to take your word for it. Thank you. Liam Sandy Maria. Studs and Duds is up here. You know, buddy? I'm good, mate. I'm good. My head is spinning, trying to work this league out and figure out who's going to finish where and... So much fun. And before we get any further, does this mean you're officially back on the <laughs> island? You've got Wilson with you. You're officially. I did. You're back. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my best friend along. We have been spending a lot of time yes. together. Oh, man. And uh, don't the bullets look good? Oh, and of course, in studs and duds on nbl.com.au, you suggested for many people to join you and you talked yes. at that tropical location so nicely. So looking forward to that. All right. Hashtag NBL Overtime to get involved. Let's get to the Cairns type fans. We're going to talk about what may or may not happen shortly, but one thing we do know, they are winning and they are playing particularly well. They sure are. And uh, we highlighted this game coming into the round, uh, Adelaide in Cairns. If Adelaide had won this, they would have been tied with the Taipans for wins and losses. And Daniel Johnson did what he could. Jerome Randall did what he could, but they just didn't have enough friends go with him. Eric Griffin was an absolute no-show. And on the flip side... That terrific import trio for the Taipans just continue to do their thing. Scott Machado, 21 points, 9 assists. DJ Newbill, 28 points. Space Cam, mm -hmm. 24 points, 15 rebounds. When that trio is putting up numbers like that, they are not losing. That's just the reality of it. And that place is a fortress. Mm. They have won Eight of their last ten games, if I'm correct, at yeah. home. Come on, man. Nobody wants no parts of that team in, in the Tropical North. And shout out as well to their uh, understudies, their supporting cast. This man uh, was sensational. Oh, yes, he was. Mirko Jerick was doing his thing. Um, actually, I got confused. I thought it was the other mullet, Jared Kenny. How about the oh three my triples? He oh, hit the my one, goodness. The one-footer. Uh, the... Game after game after, we highlighted their uh, st that, that so those reserves, Jerick and Kenny and Krizlovich, and thought this is going to be where this team is undone. No, we were wrong. Those guys have really stood up, played their role, and um, they are a win or two away mm -hmm. from locking themselves in. You know what? I want to add on to what you just said about him because the game where he turned the ball over and mm -hmm. just crumbled in that Southeast Melbourne Phoenix lost. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't believe he was going to be able to turn back around the season. Or I actually thought the Taipans were going to crumble because they had the momentum prior mm. to that game, mm. up until that moment. So for him to come out and play a huge role, especially knocking down those three threes in the game against Adelaide, that goes to show you mentally he's tougher than I thought. And so that game against credit to you. South East Melbourne Phoenix was the one that Quatnoy hurt his ankle. We haven't seen him since. And we, we haven't, haven't seen Quatnoy. We mm. sat here and we were like, you're right, you spoke about the momentum, possibly sapping away from the Taipans. We have at different times questioned their depth or look at the way their yep. roster was structured. And without Quatnoy, who was having a really good rookie year, which has made that rookie of the year conversation intriguing, we thought, here we go. They have gone from there, like, on the bubble to a legitimate championship contender. And you speak about being a fortress at home. You know, they lost to Sydney almost on their opening night on that Friday, which they really probably should have won the way they played. Perth just got them and also gave me Lawara. Outside mm. of that, no one's even really been able to go there and worry them for four quarters. There's been close games, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's been more, I think, on the Taipans' inability at different times, mm -hmm. more so than the opponent. Mm. Having said that, we, we, we kind of expected them to beat Adelaide. I mean, you straight up locked it mm -hmm. in. I agree. They have a, ru a tough stretch home now. They've got one home game remaining against Illawarra. Expect them to, to win that one. But they're going to have to get some work done on the road in order to lock themselves in. I agree. But you know what? They've lost three times to Illawarra. They should beat Illawarra. Mm -hmm. And if they're a legitimate championship team, they will beat Illawarra. But we probably would have said that earlier in the year when they've already dropped three games to them. Now, mm -hmm. before we go any further... Mm. Sport is about being immersed 
in the narrative and the storylines and the fairy tales. And a lot of us sat here, and the three of us at different times in the off-season, were a little concerned about Cairns while they were putting together, or other teams were putting together their rosters and signing imports. And Mike Kelly even mentioned us to in Vegas, hey, you guys showing us no respect? And we're like, hey, <laughs> tell us who you're signing, sign them, and then we'll talk a little more about it because it was yeah. a little bit hard at different times. None of us really went into this year, and I think a lot of people were like that, expecting them to have a really big year. We think they'll play finals now, although they've got a hard run home. If they make the grand final, mm. we're taking NBL overtime on the road to Gilligan's. Ooh. Now, it's mm. probably, not a, it's probably not a good week to talk Gilligan's <laughs> in the NBL, <laughs> but hell, we're not players. We can do whatever the hell we okay. want. So, so we're on the road. On Only the road, in Cairns? Uh, no, well, we'll go anywhere. All oh, right. But, <laughs> but Gilligan's, have you been to Gilligan's? Of course. Thank you. You've been? Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, well, it's a nice place. Uh, so, yes, if they make the grand final, that home game, we're going to be up there. We're going to do the show. We're going to work around it logistically, of course. Guy out the back, he'll strip off his Josh Powell jersey and work out how this is going to work. But we will be there for Gilligan's. Nice. We will go on the road at some point in grand final series. But Gilligan's is the def- definitive location if it's a Cairns tie pants. Okay. Happy? All right. Good. Yeah. Beautifully. We're on our way. All right. Talking about playoffs... Did you get a new phone this week? Same phone. For new me. number? <laughs> Same number. Really? Why? Oh, I just thought there was a little new number who dis that went up during the course oh. of the week. I believe yeah. that Matt Walsh mm-hmm. might have given you a phone call. Now, did you block it? Did you miss it legitimately? He wants to yeah. know your T-shirt size. Because New Zealand were great on the weekend. <laughs> they beat Sydney. They beat Melbourne, of course. You need to sit courtside with a T-shirt yep. that says, is it a New Zealand Breakers T-shirt? I or slept I was, on the Breakers. I slept on the Breakers. Make it. Yep. Did he call you? He crawled in. <laughs> he crawled. Have you spoken to him? He slid into the oh, DMs. DMs. And uh, honestly, I didn't know the number. So it was literally a new, a, a <laughs> new phone. phone. Uh, and um, then I worked out it was his US number. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, no, nah, I just had uh, some... But look, they're playing very, very well. And they are. we... Look, a lot of us thought this was the weekend that was going to bury the Breakers, right? They went won five in a row, then they lost to the two Queensland teams the week before, and it was uh oh, Sydney are coming into town, and then you're heading, uh, and then you've got Melbourne, who are coming in desperate to bounce back after their loss to Adelaide. Now the Kings did them a solid. They didn't bring the bogeyman, but they came up trunks nonetheless. Hops and 30 points. Jared Weeks a massive triple down the stretch. Oof. And then they absolutely pantsed United. Now, Melbourne laid an egg, sure, but the Breakers had a lot to say about it and they are right in the mix as a result. I mean, it was an incredible performance this weekend. Two wins, two big games. Scotty Hobson, Rob Lowe, Jared Weeks, Finn Delaney, Abercrombie. Everybody stepped up. Even Seg Henry played a little bit and, you know, gave them all he could coming off the bench. So um, it was just a, a really great win for the Mm. team they Mm -hmm. still believe and you know again I said this before when your back's against the wall we really see who you really are and they have stood up much respect to them and I'll also say I mean I wrote put a line through this team in the in the offseason and said they're not going to make the final now even if they don't make the finals they are with a few rounds to go right in that mix so I I may not be wearing that Mm t-shirt but in many ways they've proven me wrong nonetheless I will say this though if this was the team, if this was the makeup, where it wasn't a, a log jam at shooting guard Webster and Sec Henry, where honestly, right now, they don't have a teenager running their team from the point guard position. They haven't had off court stuff happen within this team for a long time. If this was the mix coming into the year, it's I'd have had a lot more. It's a different conversation. I'd have had a lot more faith. Unfortunately, those other things. Gave them a record to begin the year that means they're climbing a mountain. Which leads to an intriguing off-season for New Zealand, break playoffs or not, because Corey Ripps is signed. Is mm-hmm. he signed? And that was part of the... Well, I'm not sure if it's part of the deal, but that was announced when he obviously went to China a couple of months ago or so ago. So, mm-hmm. essentially, you're right. The short rotations is something we've spoken a little bit around Cairns, around New Zealand, and the fact that they've essentially played better when there hasn't been the logjam. And Sick Henry, in fact, spoke about it on a, Mel- on a radio interview with me a couple of weeks ago in Melbourne where he spoke about they know what their roles are. Mm. Everything's defined. We know what we got to do. There's no second guessing. There's no concerns about maybe possibly, hey, this doesn't go well for two or three minutes. So they're going to try and change things up. And they're a much better team for it. But yeah. then it leads to that interesting but offseason. But that's, that's an interesting point because um, partly it's by having that depth that when you have a couple of guys go out, you can cover for it in the way mm-hmm. that they have. True. Sydney have had that same situation. Right now, South East Melbourne Phoenix, we got come into the season and go, actually, they're not very deep. They're pretty banged up right now. And as a result, 
it's kind of making things tough. All right, they beat, of course, Sydney on the Friday night and they beat Melbourne United on the Sunday. And we sat here last week and showed and spoke about some concerns with Melbourne United. And the one thing that we thought would definitely happen was that they would get to New Zealand and be desperate. There have been situations in the course of the year where they've been beaten, they've been outplayed in certain quarters, but you would say that their talents allowed them to stay in a majority of games, even games they've lost, into a fourth quarter. That's something we didn't see on Sunday. They went to New Zealand with one of their most, if not their most important game of the year, and as you said earlier, they laid an egg. Now, mm. a lot's got to do with the fact that New Zealand wanted it more, mm -hmm. but also, we said this last week, how can you not be desperate in this situation with the whips cracking and teams playing so well below them? And they were horribly disappointing from the opening tip. They were. Um, it was a really bad loss. Dean Vickerman was asked after that loss, is it time for Melbourne, you guys, to press the panic button? Is it panic stations at Melbourne United? And you would expect often the coach in that said, well, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. We, he said, yes, to be honest, we need to change a lot of what we're doing because we're not playing good basketball. Chemistry is clearly an issue. At both ends of the floor, it's, it's impacting. Looks like the weight of the world is on Chris Golding's shoulders mm -hmm. right now. Looks like he's got a whole bunch of bottled up frustration. And as a result, I mean, that was their worst performance of the season at a time when they needed to have their best. And, and if you look at it, let's look at their run home because it's not an easy run home. It starts with the Sydney Kings away this Sunday, Australia Day. And as we look at it, Homicide, the Wildcats in the open air game, you got the Bullets away and they've got so many huge games to go. The Hawks, they should beat, but, you know, they've had their moments. Cairns, who they haven't beaten yet, and then South East Melbourne Fin. That is a tough run for a team that's horribly out of form. With, that, with, with this schedule, they literally will win two games. Season is over, pack the bags, go home. <laughs> They're not winning this round. They're not winning in versus Perth. They're not winning versus Brisbane. They will beat Illawarra. They're not winning versus Cairns. They will beat the Phoenix. They will be two and six, two and four out of these last six games. Season over. They don't want to play no more, man. Liam, you got chemistry the place, issues man. right now. You got chemistry issues right now? How is that just going to all of a sudden flick the switch and, oh, we're great again when we play the Kings? Ain't going to happen. Guess what? Casper Boy averages 30 points a game against this team. Think he's going to lose against his former team? No. Two and four out of the last six games. Guarantee you that. Pack the bags. Melbourne United, it's over. It's over. This ain't no reverse psychology motivation when they come out two and four out the last six games. Get them out of here. It's over. It's over. Disgusting basketball they playing. Disgusting. What's going to be the story when the season is done with the budget that was spent on a team like that that don't make finals? That's a conversation I'd like to hear. Anyway. <laughs> they do have some chemistry issues, but also defensively they've been pretty poor. Yeah. Liam Sandemurray at the plasma. They have, and I'm going to point them out in a sec, but I will say, and I, I agree with a lot of what you just said, Corey, but I will say, last time you said this kind of stuff about Melbourne United, and mm -hmm. I was right there with you, they went on a six-game <laughs> winning streak. I'm telling you what's going to happen. This okay. season is done, Liam. Yeah. Well, th let me point it's out a, a couple... Different team, right? Different season, different part of the year. Their primary struggles over the course of this year has been at the defensive end, right? And we know that they recruited these two guys, pause it there, these two imports, Sean Long and Mallow Trimble. Neither of them proven defenders at the professional level. And we know they only put 68 points on the board the other night, but their lack of execution defensively puts a lot of pressure on their offense. Look at this. The scores are tied a few minutes into the first quarter. This is where the, the breakers blew out and Melbourne United were playing catch-up from there. This is not any kind of special action they're running here. This is just a, head, a handoff. He th Weeks he threw it to Rob Lowe, he's going to hand it off. Now, in this situation, when you're Sean Long or you're Mellow Trimble, you've got a couple of different coverages you can use, right? He can jump out and show and Trimble's going to fight over. He can double him. He can mush if he gets across and Trimble fights over. Or... He can give him a gap and Trimble can get through. What you can't do, roll the tape, is just kind of set an extra pick here and let Weeksy get to the rim. The help here, Golding, has no idea what's going on, not paying attention. This next, this next clip is uh, another example of their communication breakdowns. Now, pause this here. This is Scotty Hobson just out of frame here. 
Mallard Trimble wants to switch back onto Scotty Hobson when the ball leaves Finn Delaney's hands. But the communication, these guys aren't switched on. So Finn Delaney, roll the tape. He throws the ball back to Hobson. Look, this is the very next play. No switch, wide open three ball for Finn Delaney. Your season's on the line here. How is this happening at the start of the game? Now, pause this right here. This is early in the fourth. You're down 19, but you just scored a bucket. Am I math right? No, you're down 19, 21. 19 now. Now you're down now. 19. Yeah. What do you got to do in this situation? Pressure the ball. You got to get stay up. You got to get up the floor, or the game's done, right? right. So Shay Illy wants to do that. Roll the tape. He gets after Jared Weeks up here. Gets the ball out of his hands. Now this happened time and time and time again in the fourth quarter, and it was like. They just didn't want it as much as the breakers. And I think that was pretty obvious from the opening tip, and that's something we spoke about last week. It is a concern. They are incredibly talented. They are still somehow in the fall right now, so they're still alive. But from what we've seen on Sunday, it's going to be a huge, a huge, huge turnaround for them to get going. Talent ain't getting it done. Yeah. This league is too good. The I agree. teams that they're playing against are too good and just as talented and I, want it more. I'll tell you this. They're, on Instagram today, they played a scratch match against the Victorian under-18 team, I think, and Casey Prather played. So we'll see what happens over the... I, I don't know how close he is. There was one where he dunked. There's a photo on there where he was dunking the ball, so he must be in relatively good shape. So that's something to watch as well. Stanton Kidd probably hasn't set the world on fire over the last month or so, however long he's been here, maybe three weeks. So we'll see how it plays out from there. All right, they play the Sydney Kings this week. That's a loss. Well, but, well. Casper Ware averages 30. They're not going to win. Let's roll the vision of Sydney Kings. <laughs> There we go. We can roll that vision all day. I'm going to roll this from last week. Yeah, I know he was 6 for 22, 2 for 12 from the 3. But guess what? Where was his best games versus what team? I agree, against Melbourne United. All right, What do you think is going to happen? Was it a schedule loss for New Zealand? No, it wasn't a schedule loss. They went in there to win. No, they they, they bogeyed at home. They took a calculated risk. Calculated risk. And it was best for them in the long term to leave bogeyed at home. Mm -hmm. Jason Tate's been sensational. All NBL first team. 100%. Are you showing him enough for us? Did you see what I posted? (laughs) Did you see what I posted today? First team all NBL. Hey, Liam. Liam. It's Lamar Patterson and Cam Oliver. Liam Schumann. Liam Schumann. He can't argue with you, man. He can't. He's Schumann. He you're right. Argue. You're absolutely right. Well, let's talk the Kings. Argue. Let's talk the Kings. This <laughs> yeah, sorry. was a really good win. They put it all together in mm-hmm. this game. Bogut looked terrific. Oh, my God. Casper found his range. He warming up for, for Melbourne <laughs> this weekend. <laughs> He's also warming up for the finals. I tell you what, if Casper finds his stroke oh. from here on out, this give, give the rings to the Kings. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, guess what? He's going to be... Well, after next weekend, he, he'll find a stroke because he kills United every time. <laughs> hey, Didi Lazada jumped back. And he's in back, the ball. 18 points. So, a, shout out to Didi. Are we talking, yeah, maybe all NBL teams not out of oh, the question? Like For who? Uh, no, nah, I'm just joking. That was just <laughs> oh. a yeah, bad joke. Just want to make mention of that guy. Because yeah. Xavier Cooks is playing really good basketball, mm-hmm. and it's something that we're not overly surprised by. But the fact is that it took a little while. He's into a new club, coming off a knee as well. He is just getting better and better each and every week. Defensively helps him a hell of a lot as well. And the way he plays offense, of course, makes him a hell of a lot better team as well. Last year, the Kings were really good. Mm -hmm. They tied for first with Perth and Melbourne at the end of the regular season. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't get that top spot on percentage. But they went into the finals tired and banged up. Jerome Randall more than anybody else. Andrew Bogut had been... He fell away a little bit as the season went on. He was not at his best in the postseason. You want to talk about load management? You want to talk about his minutes being reduced throughout the season? I think they've done a really smart job of sorting that out over the course of the year. And this... Don't get it... Don't get it mixed up. Don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. This is the team to beat. A little bit of bogey too from Sunday against South East Melbourne Phoenix. You're right, load management, game minute management, whatever you want to call it. He did look remarkably a hell of a lot fresher on Sunday against Phoenix. He looked really good. And this is something that you need. It doesn't matter which way you carve it up. Andrew Bogut has to be at near enough to his NBL best, at mm-hmm. least, for them to win the championship. Look, 100% I agree. That was a wise decision. He did look fresher. He came out with way more energy. Think about this, all right? 300-plus NBA games, we know this, right? Last year, he left the NBL, went to the NBA. 
Then from there, came and played in the offseason, went to China for the mm-hmm. World Cup and played a lot heavy minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then he jumps back into the NBL. He had no offseason to rest. Mm-hmm. So to do the load management in this manner is a smart move. Mm-hmm. Agreed. If Casper finds his stroke the rest of the way, if Didi Lazada plays the way he did on, on the weekend and Andrew Bogut's feeling fresh, this, this team wins it. Listen, man, this Bryce Cotton <laughs> averages 35 a game. I'm with you. Tell me, I'm with you. 35 a game, he averages. There's nobody that can guard Bryce Cotton. All right? So if Casper finds a stroke, he and Bryce Cotton balance each other out. Terrific Tarico's going to be there. And guess what? Ain't too much load management you can have in five-game series because we know that's going five-game series. I'm going with uh, the team out west. I told you, I mailed those rings. I got, I repossessed called, the rings. They called the Perth Wildcats. And they went out, <laughs> out west in REC Arena. You sent them already? I've been sent them. Miles Plumley's in the building. 30 years old, got a motor. <laughs> you know what? And I tell you this, all that stuff we've seen Bogut do right there, load management him up all day. Miles Pumley got something for that ass. You know, you know. That's what's going on. You know all I'm hearing right now? <laughs> let, let, let me hear what you hear. NBL overtime at Cottesloe Beach Hotel. Just a Sunday afternoon session. We roll let's on in. Let's do it. Good work. I'll have the coconut. I'll tan up. Let's It'll do be it. a nice little time. All right. Let's talk. Sanders watching, of course. Thank mm. you to everyone across the country who does this segment for Liam Santa Maria. But over to you, mate. What uh, did everyone else say this week? Well, let's start <laughs> in New Plymouth. There was okay. a lot going on, including Jordan Hunter's free throw. Yeah. <laughs> and watch Brandon Ashley's response as he looks for the window that's open. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, enjoyed some work on nice. the Sydney bench. The air guitar was uh, <laughs> was in in full force there. And I tell ya, they didn't. They weren't Slippers? handing out. They weren't handing out the clappers in New Plymouth. So this lady, check her out. Wow, oh. she <laughs> made it. <out>. Hey. <laughs> nice to see Kevin Anstey at uh, RAC Arena. <laughs> Shout out to the guy. <laughs> that was that was a nice little surprise. Full got the shorts and everything. And who is in charge of high performance at the Sydney Kings, just quietly? Because this work from Lucas <laughs> Walker and Brad Newley is outstanding. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> at Liam underscore Santa, if you've got anything that can make the segment, because that's essentially how it goes nowadays, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Did you get any this week? Any shout-outs for anyone? There was a little credit there. There was? That. And I you know what? It. It's first. In, sometimes I get the same thing a few times. Yeah. First in, best first, dressed. Fair on enough, credit, too. On all right. Uh, NBL Top 10. All thanks to LD Mobile. Take it. Round 16 is done. Let's have some fun at your Aldi Mobile NBL Top 10 at number 10. You know, James Harden was trying to perfect the one-legged three in the NBA, but it's Jared Kenny that's doing it in our number 10 play, and that leaves us with just one takeaway. James Harden needs a mullet. Jared Kenny and that gorgeous hair providing the flair at number 10. On to number nine, where it's a similar situation for Brisbane. End of the third, and this shot is flat absurd. Jason Kadi lets free a three that brings rain as he hoists it to the moon and watches it drop through. That gets in at number nine. At eight, New Zealand running a simple handoff that leads to some serious liftoff. Jared Weeks could have driven a truck into the lane. He was so alone. Instead, he rises to the heavens and hammers it at the throne for number eight. It's Brisbane again at number seven, and Big Will has no chill. Surrounded by Hawks, but it's Magne that rocks. A little and one fun as Will rises like a missile and draws the whistle on this alley-oop at number seven. On to number six and prepare the steam machine. Tariko White is hammering this thing. Rising higher than the Phoenix and I mean this. Tariko explodes at number six. At number five, we start off balling with Sam Frawling who thought he had an easy dunk falling, but Will Magne getting in the way. And stay with me, people. We're headed to the other end and now Big Willie's just getting silly. Hang on the rim for a little while and do it in style. Will Magne full service for the number five play. On to number four and you know the rules. The International Dunking Federation says you can't have a top 10 unless Space Cam rocks the nation. No twist needed at all. Just give Cam Oliver the ball and that's all. He's in at number four. We're up to number three and folks, it's a Will Magne kind of day. 
on the business end. They're throwing it in on this alley-oop. But wait, there's more. We're going to the other end of the floor. Will getting up off the deck to deny Sunday, but there's still more to this play. Now it's the guy who originally set up Will Magnate. Nathan Sobey, one Kenobi gets three for a three, and man, the bullets are firing at the armory. Catching oops and protecting hoops, the dudes from Brisbane just bringing the truth. They're in all over the place at number three. On to number two, and it's Jay Sean Tate trying to end Finn. Finn Diesel goes up, and if you're curious, Jay Sean was just too fast and just too furious. Jay Sean Tate getting mean at the rim at number two. But at number one, get ready for a record scratch because this DJ was just no match for OB Shea. These aren't the points you're looking for as OB uses the force to get off the floor and prevent the score as Shea gets the number one play on the NBL. Boys, we do have to get into Brisbane, I think, before we do get out of here because you're on. Did you make that? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> Did you make that? No, no, I don't have that. Me. I didn't think that either, but here but it is. He has been great company. And it's nice to finally to see some ships arriving and yeah. some other people <laughs> because the sun's shining, the water's warm, and it's and the Brisbane bullets are rolling. So the question I've got for you is, is he still the mayor of Brisbane Island? Because he definitely jumped off. He swum back to the non-Brisbane Island mainland. And then all of a sudden when they get going, which they're doing the things yeah. you thought they would do, mm. but you gave up on them. So is he still the mayor or does someone no, else he's have still the mayor. He's still the mayor. He's still the mayor. Okay, he was first back. <laughs> the, 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 the life raft didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Wilson and I swam back to shore. And I tell you, it's, they're, they're playing really well. They, they are, are going to be seriously tough to keep out of, out of the four, as we said last week. The, do you want to talk about a fortress? They're now seven and three at home which means they've got four more games Ooh. at home. You're probably going to need to beat Brisbane in Brisbane if you're going to make the finals, if you're one of those other chasing teams. The conversation we've had a lot of times is about who don't you want to play. And we've said the exact same thing almost every time. Whoever does end up making third, it looks like it'll be Cairns, but whoever finishes fourth, if Melbourne arrests their form slump somehow, they're going to have to be in good form. But whoever finishes fourth will be playing their best basketball of the year, be it Brisbane, be it New Zealand, be it Adelaide. And that is a scary proposition, and you touch on that fortress. If it's New Zealand, good luck going to New Zealand right now. The whole nation seems to be behind them, and it's great to see. If it's Brisbane, you've got to go to Brisbane and mm. win on the road at some point, and you don't want to get into a deciding game. So whoever finishes fourth, whoever finishes third, but whoever finishes fourth are playing their best basketball of the year, and that's the way it should be. Look, um, Kansas finishing third. Mm -hmm. Brisbane Agreed. is finishing fourth. Brisbane. Brisbane is finishing fourth. Does that, does and I'll tell you this right now. Yes. Cam Glidden, I am happy for you that you have hit shots from the perimeter. I know how it is as a player to be going through a slump and, you know, to break the slump and hit from the perimeter, it's a great feeling, especially for you behind the arc because you have struggled all year. You came off the bench, you won't get DMP. So for you right now, 16 points in your last game, that's a great look for him, mm -hmm. for the Brisbane Bullets especially. And then you got Will Magny. Come on, man. I said this from when? They played the NBL One All-Star team. We were sitting like this in Tassie, mm -hmm. and I said, this kid right here could be in the NBA next year on a two-way. You both laughed at me. Both of you I laughed at me. We laughed at you. We didn't yes, you did. Agree. You like, yo, we didn't laugh. against the NBL One All Stars. I'm like, look, I know what I'm seeing. This kid, all he needs is to be developed. That kid will be NBA property next season, well, this time. Next year, this time, yeah. we'll be cheering him on, talking about how we used to, you know, how. Will he be in he the did. Boomers team at the Olympics? Yo, I don't care. Okay, cool. He's going to be um, in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> you know the NBA. thing? NBA. You mentioned the thing about Glidden. If you look at when they've played their best. Glidden's been really good as he was on the weekend. It's been Kadee at different Kadee times. coming off the so bench. So they've been able to Kona, find players who Patterson, have been able to come up, who have had a great year, have had good. individual games in, say, 2020, after New Year's or at least after Christmas, that has really contributed. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. actually when they've played mm -hmm. their best, it's not about when this guy's playing well and that guy. Yeah. It's actually with this team, team, it's about their mentality and the way they approach the game. When they see it as a must-win game, we got to go out and get this thing. Not just, let's just play every possession and see, see how it plays happens. out. Mm -hmm. right. That's how it was at the start of the year. That's not how it is well, right now. The important thing is, as we wave goodbye to you, is that, yes... 
The mayor of Brisbane <laughs> Island is back. And if you want to find out how the weather is, jump on nbl.com.au. Studs and duds. It's essentially a, it's an ad. For, it's an ad. It's an yeah. ad for Brisbane Island. You can read about it. The only thing missing, in fact, there is a photo. Anyway, we're out of here. See you, my man. Double overtime. Check it at NBL. See ya. Peace.